Research Pod. This is Eugene Kim, as always, with Pauline Wong and John Bogner. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> had a had a pretty busy week, and seems like everyone had a pretty busy week.、Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're excited for today's episode. Well, actually, before we before we even、uh, beginning、uh, to start the episode, we the last episode we did was the、um, engagement sessions. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like two episodes ago. Yeah, engagement session. So, anyone who listened to that,、um, anyone maybe who is more inspired to doing the ins- engagement sessions on all that, like if you haven't, re- you know, included the engagement sessions in your packages, that might be a good episode to kind of check out. We thought that was that was pretty insightful. Today's episode is we titled it、um, "Sales One Hundred One," <clears throat> and literally, like. I think oftentimes we mention sales. I think oftentimes people think about a lot of the, like a pushy salesman. Like I'm sure we have all been the end of. So, and I'm not. I'm not really trying to be intended that way.、Um, I think the sales is sort of the basic sort of communication skills that we all should have or that we already have. So we thought. Just by acknowledging what the sales techniques are and just knowing what those are, probably we should be able to find it in our conversations, and also, you know, be able to use that to our advantage in some way if it does apply to you, or if it doesn't apply to you, then maybe you should, you know, you should less use less of the the sales technique sort of thing. So, how do you guys feel about this episode? <laughs> This is definitely my weakest point, so I'll probably pick your brain a little bit about this. Well, it's interesting because I think throughout life you come to realize a lot of skills that were never taught to us in school, and、yeah. a lot of these things are taught whether through you know the jobs that you have or just through your own you know interest and curiosity. So I think it's important. I, I mean, I feel like this is maybe something that everyone should learn, whether that is sales to sell like something like you know a car versus selling yourself, you know, in a job or something. So I think these are some of the skills that maybe we should all be learning. So good, definitely. No,、yeah. I think I think I guess my goal is to kind of let you guys know that <clears throat> that you guys already be doing sales without even knowing. So it's. I hope. Hopefully, it's not something new.、Um, and the reason that I thought that I would do this is because one, I used to. I did sales、um, after I graduated from school, just because I thought my communication skill was one of the weakest part of my、um, skill set in in the, in any career that I I set in. So、um, I thought I do door to door sales and see how many times I get thrown out or. How many times police will come and chase me, or you know, we'll see, we, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I guess I met a pretty nice boss.、Um, he taught really a good sort of sales, not the like pushy kind of sales. So、mm-hmm. I definitely have learned a lot through that experience. So, and I've definitely taken away a lot, and which I think it could definitely benefit a lot of people, especially the photographers as well, just because oftentimes I think the creatives are. Probably the furthest away from being salesy, <laughs> you know. We know how to take good photos, and you know, probably. But when it comes to business and sales side of things, it's not something that probably are really natural. So, but like I said, it's something that we we're already probably doing in your relationship with parents, with children, with anyone around you. So hopefully, hopefully, it will be beneficial. So the way I thought <clears throat> we'll run this is I will go through some of the the sales technique.、Um, in total, I have eleven、um, prepared today, <laughs> but some of them are super quick.、Um, so after we go through、uh, first three, and then next four, and then the four after, we'll just just discuss and just chat about.、Um, if you have any question to me, then you know we'll just do that. So the first three is.、Um, I call it C factors.、Uh, C factors are the acronyms、um, S, smile. The first E, 
eye contact, and three, no, uh, well, the third, third letter, and the second E is the um, enthusiasm. And right off the bat, you know, you're probably, you're probably thinking that's, that's not really a sales technique, but it's, if you think about it, if you think about, if you think about someone who is genuinely always smiling, always make a good eye contact and high, put fairly high in energy. I want to actually, I want to emphasize that, you know, like enthusiasm doesn't always have to be like, you go crazy and, you know, <laughs> Just, to, just if you're passionate about something, and just if you're just talking about, you know, they're getting the happiness across, and they're just getting, you know, um, it doesn't even have to be like super loud thing. A lot of people, when you know, when I talk about enthusiasm, a lot of people think about just being really high in energy, but that's not always the case. Enthusiasm can have a lot of different bases, but if you think about someone who's smiling with eye contact, and you know passionate about talking about whatever they like that person's often fairly well liked how do you guys feel about that <laughs> well yeah for sure if you say you're passing by someone on the street and they're trying to get you to buy something if mm -hmm. they're if they seem very sad and they're not even looking at you then that's not gonna work right yeah no. right well yeah. actually let me let's think about in terms of not person who's trying to sell you but even person who you meet in a I don't know, if you go to school, um, someone in mm -hmm. a classroom, or if you work with people, you know, someone who, who is like that in the workplace, um, or, you know, even at a wedding, someone who is like that, you know, but that person's always a little easier to be, you know, easier to like, right? Yeah. Easier yeah. to open to. Yeah. So that's, I would say, the fundamentals of the, the techniques. Um, so just have, it, have a habit of <laughs> smiling a little bit more often. Which, um, I feel like we all three of us do pretty well. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to imagine myself um, <laughs> talking to a, to a client. And uh, I don't know if um, every, uh, our listener, listeners will, will remember that um, sometimes I feel weird about talking about prices. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, I feel myself like looking away while I'm saying the price or like, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, like I, I just feel cringy about, you know, yeah. but um, I need to practice that. Like really maintain eye contact and smile and I guess believe what I'm trying to sell. Mm. Yeah. But <clears throat> then I'll, I'll come a little bit later, but confidence and, you know, being passionate, being passionate about it can be a little bit different. But someone, because like before, maybe even before you talk about pricing, if you have been smiling and if you have been enthusiastic, mm -hmm. enthusiastic, then that person's already you. They that you, they already liked you in that in that way. So the confidence is, you know, hopefully will come. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'll I think follow. that's one of the reasons that it's it's important to do things that we like because that way the enthusiasm will come across much easier. You know, def yeah. definitely anything that we do, there are things that we'll always find difficult with or that we don't like to do. Um, even in the photography side of things, you know, there are probably things that we don't love it, but we do it <laughs> because as a whole, we still like it. Shall we move on to the next one? So uh, oftentimes these four principles are kind of known as the four, principle sales, four principles of sales for impulse sales. But honestly... It works with so many different ways. Um, I don't want to just say say for the impulse um, sales. So the four uh, principles are uh, sense of urgency, fear of loss, and Jones effect. And then the last one is indifference. Um, these four are not something that you have to use all four. Um, some people are much better with one thing over the other. I feel like I'm very good at indifference, so oftentimes that kind of works well for me. The other three, I feel like that is just not very, they're very comfortable for me. So I don't, yeah, I don't use it much, but just going over the definitions, do you guys, can you guys sort of like guess what the, what these are? Uh, the, uh, first, the first two, or the, uh, actually the three of them, I, I can tell. Okay. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Not the Jones effect. Okay. Yeah. So sense of urgency, just being, just being, hurried like don't take 
too much of a time and fear of loss is only um is only available like right now oftentimes used with time so a lot of people do get confused with sense of urgency but yeah fear of loss if you don't get it right now you will lose it mm. um so oftentimes with the photography i think it can go well with you know that's a that's a popular date right now like it's in the spring or fall so if you don't book it soon yeah. then you know you may not be able to get that spot with me kind of thing <clears throat> jones effect is is very close to like name dropping so jones effect is works of as that everyone like to like to be like your neighborhood your your neighbors or people around you some some people who you feel similar to so let's say let's say like uh, your neighbor two two down two houses down said you know like they just bought a new car and it was like the car that that you've been kind of wanting to buy now that you really want to buy because your neighbor who you quite like uh bought it too so it must be is kind of an approval that you know that that works so like it's like you know if you get a referrals um in a photography world, it could be something like if you get referrals and they've been the best friend from since high school and you're talking and your friend that I just photographed like three months ago, you know, bought the highlight video as well. Um, and then, you know, that was that was not part of the package, but, you know, you can you can get that as well if you want to. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's sort of the Jones effect. Um, I feel like I do this a lot. Annoyingly. Yeah, like- <laughs> yeah, because I, I, where I go, you know, you know, in the hospital, like, oh, that's, um, I just did her photo or their engagement session, and mm. then yeah, that's how most of the time that's how I get another booking from another person because yeah. I use another person's name. Mm-hmm. Which is, exactly, okay, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, and you probably use like things like sense of urgency as well, like. You probably like say like when are you available, and then you probably say sooner the better, or like we're gonna get to get into a pretty busy season now. So yeah, um, if you tell me what the dates are available, then you know. Um, yeah, that's something that I learned over mm-hmm. time because lately, uh, but back then, I would give them my available dates, and mm-hmm. I guess it's the wrong way of doing that. I guess they have to tell me what their available dates are, and I will tell them if I'm available or not. Because if they know that you have a lot like dates, if you, if you give them dates, <clears throat> most of the time, like they'll take their time or they he's got like available dates. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you if you tell them like, oh yeah, I'm not available for that date and this not, then they they they're more likely to to book because yeah. they don't yeah, especially they don't miss out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that 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 would be the fear of loss. Yeah, <laughs> Pauline, do you use any of these? Yeah, kind of similar, I guess, to John. Like, for example, if clients want something specific, like the cherry blossoms or something while it's still in season, then you kind of have to urge them to decide on, like, location and time and date and stuff. But in terms of going back to actually selling something, then, yeah, definitely, like, the urgency of you have a sale going on and, you know, that's definitely something that I've seen. Mm. I personally haven't used it very often, maybe to the best extent but um, yeah, and I was thinking for the Jones effect, I was I would definitely fall victim to it before. Like, you know, say you both started using, you know, a program or bought a new like gear or something, I would definitely be looking into <laughs> that, right? So, so true, yep, true. I yep have experienced that myself. <laughs> so yeah, that's funny. And then, <clears throat> um. I guess I haven't really explained the indifference, just in, just in case anyone who doesn't know. Um, indifference is almost to the point that you don't really care, like they, if they don't purchase or not. Like you, it's not that you shouldn't care, but you act like. I mean, you're not lying to them, but at the same time, you're almost like acting that it, you know, like I don't have to make sales with you. Like I have plenty coming in, kind of thing. <laughs> like you're not selling it. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. I'm not selling you anything. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just helping. Don't definitely been to been doing fear of them. <laughs> but indifference is like one of those one. I I would say like some of the quite often time that I would use it is like 
if they like um I would not like if I offer like some some like highlight video um in the package like and then they're like um we're not hundred percent sure about the uh video just quite yet. I'm like, okay. If you if you make if you if you decide, you know, like you want to, then you can add it later or you know, uh, just let me know by like uh, a month before the wedding or something like that. So I'm using both um, the fear of loss and then, well, sense of urgency and indifference at the same time. So yeah, indifference, I think works great um, to sort of like set yourself as well-established business. <laughs> so I think it's, um, it's the most used technique among some of the top um, photographers. But you, as you can see, these are the, these four are the sort of like the main sort of techniques of sales, and and now you probably know like we use it all the time, and we've heard it so many times from so many people, not only in photography but in so many different industries, and so oftentimes a lot of these people use it even even without knowing that these are the techniques in in sales. You know, we've like even children use it. <laughs> you know like wow you know, uh, so it's something you know like probably in 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 relationship we'll probably use it too yeah we use it all the time but the the reason the whole reason that we're doing this is now that when once you hear it now you'll be able to spot it at that moment like is this person actually trying to sell me using this technique or if if the salesperson would like if, if a salesman were one of the clients they know how to communicate they know when to use and what not to use and all that kind of stuff so they can get away with a lot of things and and maybe you can maneuver that into your advantage as well i'm not asking you to be the the sales guru <laughs> but um, just knowing it and i think it's it will, like we will probably be able to um, improve our communication skills um, overall so the next four is sort of it's it's probably widely used techniques as well, but it's like these are none of my own. But the four that I value very much um, in terms of um, communicate communicating with clients and and just doing the sales part. So for this one, instead of going through all four, um, I'll just do one by one. First one is listening. I would say, and this this applies to so much in in communication in general. You know, we need to listen better in in order to communicate better. Um, and I think in sales, like if we were trying to try to like, for example, me, like when I was doing to do do to do sales, the main goal for me was trying to get them to talk more and more. If they talk more, then it becomes easier for me. So I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to listen to their situation, listening to their. Um, circumstances and I think it goes same with the you know wedding clients as well you know all the weddings are similar in some degree but at the same time they're very different and they're all the people have different family history relationship history just listening to what the what they really want from us um, as a wedding photographer is probably the best way to um, offer them the best solution in terms of packages, in terms of services they want. Um, so I think with anything um, in sales, probably probably I would say 80% is listening and 20% is pitching and actually making sales. So yeah, listening is the key. Uh, one of one of the analogy that I like to use and which has been quite popular on, on social media and all that is the... Um, uh, sell me this pen from Wolf of Wall Street. Have you guys seen the film? Mm -hmm. So bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you seen that bit though? Like from mm -hmm. like either Instagram or from TikTok or it's a it's a famous um, sort of like Leonardo DiCaprio is asking people like the salespeople trying to sell me this pen, and what that what that whole concept is is oftentimes sort of new sales guys or people who are not very good at sales try to sell to every single person. So if someone were to ask you, like, sell me this pen, and they will start describing how good the pen is and how well it writes, and it will just describe the pen. 
But the real, a lot of the good salespeople or a lot of the good sort of communicating people in general, they would ask like, like, why do you, what do you, what do you need the pen for? Like, do you need like a really high end fountain pen for your business? Or do you need something like really cheap pen that you can just write like right away? Or is it for customers in your, I don't know, in your, in your, I don't know, in bakery or, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, like pen just writes, pen is a tool that we write on a paper, but at the same time, there's so many different types of pen that we can sell to customers and all the customers are looking for different kind of pen. Listening to what the customers want, what the situation they're in, what sort of how much money they have or you know pen is just a, a tool that we use to describe it but like that could be used for anything like for this wedding you know packages that we're trying to sell six hours is if they're getting married and be done with it in four hours six hours package is not good right so <clears throat> just try not trying to you know because sometimes i think this we make we make these mistakes all the time but especially like me when i first started out like because i wasn't getting that many inquiries when you know when people were to inquire and i would try to sell them the package in no matter way possible like you know but sometimes it, if it doesn't fit it never fits right mm. so listening to what customers really want is is probably the main principle that i have in terms of doing a sales second is mirror effect is literally you're copying your customer or client so that could be in terms of the energy level that could be in terms of posture if you're if you're talking you know face to face i don't know in your office or on a street or wherever if that person has an arm crossed then you have your arm crossed that way what is a psychological thing but when they feel you're similar, then you feel more, they feel more comfortable. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. So just matching the tone. Like if you, if you're someone who talk really quick, then, but they slow, they talk really slow, then try to match the sort of like their speech speed. You know, often the things like that, you know, is, is really helpful. Then that you, that they know that you're paying attention to them without really knowing that. So third one is, it's never about the money, but focus on the value. I think good example for this would be, would you say $4,000 is expensive? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what you're selling. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> let's say $4,000 iPad. Is that if expensive? You give, if you give me a Tesla for 4,000, yeah. then that's cheap. <laughs> that's one. There, yeah. $4,000 iPad is expensive, but $4,000, I don't know, a uh, wedding package might be about right price or maybe a little bit below average. Uh, but if it's a $4,000 Tesla, then then you have to question whether, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's something wrong with that car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it always comes down to the actual, you know, the, so everyone's in a different situation. Like all the clients are in different situation. They value different things. You know, this is a sort of like a great sort of story that I've heard. Like people, when people talk about like premium weddings, then a lot of people think about that all entire wedding has to be really expensive. But if the if the customer, if the couple value photography side of things, and if they believe in the power of photography in terms of even if they get married at somewhere not the greatest venue or not the not the prettiest, but if they value the photography side of things, and they might well be spending you know fifteen thousand on photography and five thousand on venue <laughs> doesn't happen doesn't happen often but it depends on the value that the couples have or the customers have or the clients have so it's um, never try to set the value of the price like yourself so that's why we go back to the the first point of listening um, asking enough questions and um, this will tie well with the uh, fourth one. I call it sa saving the bullet. <laughs> and saving the bullet really means your your view or your um, your you talking in general. So just listen until the end, gather all the information, and then maybe during the conversation ask 
you know, like if they're talking about like we have 60 people and we're writing our own vows and, um, you know, when they're saying things, things like that in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this package might be good. If I add the highlight video, that might be good for them. If I add the audio to them, that might be good. Just keep thinking about it. Don't don't say, oh, yeah, I, we have this or we have that. Don't like take over that. Um, just keep listening, keep asking questions. In that case, like, I don't know, how long are you thinking of the, doing the entire entire day? Like, how long do you need me for? Um, just just keep gathering the information and just put them all into in, in your head and just come up with simple packages, maybe one or two, and then just give them the options. Then oftentimes, one, they understand that <clears throat> you listen to them. And second, that you matched all the all their needs in terms of like what they've been asking for. And third, if the price is in the right value in terms of what they what they've been thinking, then they will book you. Right? I mean yeah. they if they don't, then ask why not? <laughs> I mean they should be booking. So yeah. So those are the four four principles that I usually follow in every single conversations that I have. You know, saving saving the bullet is is I think is a good practice for all kind of communications. Like even among friends, you know, among friends, like you know, like if you keep jumping into conversation, like when someone else is talking, that we call that you're you're rude kind of thing, right? So just waiting, just gathering information, just listening, and then just talking back to them. Like at the end of it, that usually is is a good practice for you know all different all different skill level, all different communication um, uh, practices. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, question time. I mean, not really a question, but it is kind of going back to what I said earlier. It's interesting how, you know, a lot of photographers who get into this industry, they don't realize that it's more than just taking photos, especially if you're going to start a business. So a lot of people don't really realize what comes along with starting a business. And that's why I'm saying earlier that this is probably really interesting for people to learn. And as you mentioned, a lot of people already are doing this without knowing it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's interesting to put like a term or, you know, a specific word behind what we're doing um, and just being more aware of what you're doing and how you can improve. And I think for me personally, every like call that I have, whether it's sales or not, I, I feel like I'm improving myself and kind yeah. of learning um, how to best, I guess, communicate with clients and stuff. So yeah, going through all these has been interesting because I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I do do this without yeah. really realizing that I'm yeah. doing it. But it's interesting how we have learned how to do it over time. It's not something, I don't think I've ever like learned it yeah. in like a class or something. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting mm -hmm. how we do pick up on it. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. being more aware of ourselves and and yeah. So I guess it's also good to listen to this because um, like Pauline was saying, some things you learn over time. But mm -hmm. some things you learn by trial and error. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are some things where, in, you know, it's good to learn, and you don't have to go through that error error phase, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just yeah, learn what the correct way. I mean, the most likely way of doing things. Yeah, and and like you guys said, you know, like this is something that we do all the time, but. Just I think just having a structure, um, and just now that now that if you know these um, uh, principles, then you can really check off like, am I doing this well? Am I um, so? For example, like mirror effect is something that we don't uh, sometimes sometimes we don't even know about, um, but it's just a psychological thing that we maybe do it even without noticing that you know we do. It. Um, but just now that you can really sort of like practice in terms of like. And to see how your couples or your clients react to when you do do certain things. Hopefully, that everyone um, who listens to this podcast, that you guys are probably doing everything really well. You probably know all these. You probably have used this at least once in not only in sales, but only you know it, during a conversation with your family members or with with anyone or with your colleagues or anyone. Um, so. It's not unknown techniques, but it's something that will help you once you kind of recognize it. I think, yeah, the last four definitely that I find very helpful. 
And oftentimes it comes out as as one of those. Being a good listener is always kind of like a lot of people kind of perceive you as um, you're a nice person. <laughs> and, you know, being a nice person, you know, it's always kind of nice to be um, on the um, doing, doing a photography job and all that. So, yeah. One question I had would be, you know, since you've done, you've worked in sales, was it easy for you to then kind of transition some of these skills when you became like a wedding photographer and started your own business? Or do you think, you know, you still had to kind of relearn, I guess, some of these skills? I think there are definitely parts that I had to relearn just because door-to-door sales is very different in a sense that um, they don't expect you're coming. So <laughs> oftentimes true. it's a very hostile <laughs> environment and oftentimes, you know, I think that sort of like, that's why I think the C factors are very important, like you being in, you being enthusiastic and, and that's, I guess, I guess I kind of just explained the door to door sales pro, um, sort of like process um, that when I knock on the door and I say like, I'm from so-and-so and I'm here for what, and um, I'm smiling um, I'm making eye contact, I'm being enthusiastic, and then they're like, oh, we're not interested. And then I bring up the indifference and, okay, have a good day, and then just walk away. And then that's where the sort of like the law of average comes in. So what we say is like we tr- the overall sales goal is trying to improve the law of average. So if we hit on 30 houses, like how many sales we can do? If we do 30 houses and maybe make three sales, that's pretty good rate. Um, if I can improve that to four sales, that's even better. Same with, I think same, that that applies to weddings as well, just because we get so many inquiries and sometimes if it's not even asking about, we love your photos, are you available? It's oftentimes asking about what's your package is. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and so we get a lot more no's than, before, than, than yeses. Oftentimes, you know, if, for example, I think sort of like my current rate is probably like, if 100 people, 100 couples were to inquire, then probably do, I don't know, three sales, um, three book three. You know, I, so main goal is without improving the, the overall technique, my goal is to try to improve the number of inquiries from if I achieved 100 inquiries within two weeks, let's say, I don't, but if I do that, <laughs> then my goal is to reduce that 100 inquiries down to a week then instead of doing the three sales in two weeks, I'm doing the three sales in one week. Um, so that's why the SEO comes in. That's why the all the other, the Instagram, um, posting on Instagram and posting on Facebook, um, advertising and all that kind of comes in. So yeah, definitely um, always, always it's, I think all, everyone's kind of different, but these are so basic principles that I know these, like that I have to use them even within the photography industry and um i just have you know i just have to adjust them you know slightly by every couples that i talk to cool to all the listeners i'm sorry um that i didn't know that it was going to be only me talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um yeah but um, i mean if say you know the listeners are wedding photographers Maybe we can talk about how then you can incorporate like sales into your practice and your workflow. So I, the way, I guess the way I set up my entire sort of process is that um, <clears throat> number one, number one part is that I, I make all the pricing and packages available on my website. I mean, you guys do that too, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but the whole process, whole reason for me doing that is because I wanted to reduce the number of number of inquiries. Yeah. I wanted to improve the quality of inquiries. So instead of people just asking me what the price, what the package is, now I can really focus on people inquiring me because they are much more qualified lead. They're more people who are more willing to book me. Um, so. That's the that's the first step, and then the second step, and all that is I would include some of the wording in the, in the packages. Like for example, in one of the packages that I have, because because it's Las Vegas, there are a lot of chapel weddings, and I always put like in the chapel wedding package, I'm not available on Friday and Saturday. These packages are only available on Sunday through 
um, Thursday, having that kind of information, oftentimes I get an inquiries, things like, we're getting married at one of the chapels on Saturday. How much more do we have to pay you in order to, in order for you to, you know, shoot us at the, at the chapel kind of thing. So having that kind of sort of like fear of loss, I mean, it's not fear of loss because that's already really lost kind of thing. You know, Friday and Saturday, I'm not just available. And then just using, using like, so um, things like fear of loss, like oftentimes we use quite often in a sense that, so especially when it comes to promotion, like we, we're doing this special prices only up to when, or these are special promotion for Thanksgiving, I don't know, for Christmas or things like that then they know if that's something that they value, um, then they would rather spend the money on your promotion than some other, someone else's promotion. So things like that. I don't know. I, I, need to, I guess I need to come up with a better whole, whole, like with everything included sort of example. But yeah. But I think what we can do is after listening to this episode, if there was anything that we didn't do a very good job of explaining or I didn't do a very good job of explaining, leave us in the, in a comment on the Instagram or in Facebook. And then if there is, if there's a lot of questions, then we can even make a second episode on them or we can just answer them. Um, or I can just answer them in the Instagram or in Facebook. Um, so I think we can just, we can go from there, I guess. But honestly, like you guys, I think it's something that it's very easy to understand. It's just, just practicing, just putting, having, yeah. having more structure and just practicing. So, and like I said, the, the four principles in the middle, we, we're more comfortable with using one or the other. We oftentimes don't use all four. Yeah. That, that would be a real salesperson. Yeah. But okay. Amazing. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for letting me do this episode. <laughs> Hopefully this was I, I, I learned a lot. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> Okay, you guys can listen to our episode as always on Spotify, CastBox, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all that. And then you can watch us on YouTube and Spotify. Um, hopefully there are people watching us. So yeah, and then next episode, we're going to talk about, it's been kind of a hot topic lately. Well, I don't know if it's just been a hot topic between us <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> but between it you hard... two, yeah. <laughs> between between Joy and I, I don't want to talk about. We, we don't want to talk about a, this. Actually, have a debate about it. But so recently, uh, when I say recently, last October, October of twenty twenty two, National Park Service banned. Well, I don't want to say banned. They now require all the videographers who are uh, commercial videographers have to get a permit and oftentimes the permit takes at least 30 days more well, actually yeah at least 30 days so this is a big debate sort of like between john and i in terms of like is is that necessary is that fair or we should just we should just not have a permit system um, and all that kind of stuff so if you have an opinion on that if you have yeah Please chime in. <laughs> but if you want to see Eugene and John go at it <laughs> next week, tune in. <laughs> now we do want to watch, <laughs> not just listen. Oh boy. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's coming up. No, it'll be fun. It'll be fun next week. <laughs> but for now, hope you guys have a great week. All right, yeah. bye. Thank you. See you. See you.